In this video, I'm going to show you the effects of uh, nonlinear geometry. So, if we deform, if we use linear elasticity and we deform a um, beam too much, such that we get large deformations, significantly larger deformations than in, uh, well, the small strain theory, uh, then the um, the object will be deformed in a non-physical way. And uh, I, uh, I will run this uh, example to show you what I mean. So uh, start off with, with your linear elastic elasticity uh, model. And uh, in, um, uh, in steps, create a, a new step, uh, if you don't already have one. And don't touch anything, just uh, click OK. And let's create boundary conditions, uh, displacement, continue. Uh, we can actually uh, just select these. Done. So we're going to delete our load and create a new traction load. So we're going to create a surface traction. Click continue and mark the nodes here. I mean the, the, the lines of this mesh. Uh, hold control to deselect and click OK. The distribution is going to be uniform, the traction is going to be a general traction, the direction is going to be defined by two points, so the first point and then the second point. So the vector is, the directional vector is uh, pointing downwards in the y direction. All right, the magnitude is going to be 1000. So that's 1000 times 100. Okay, that's 100,000 newtons acting on, on, on this uh, on this thing. Uh, hopefully it's going to be enough to really bend uh, this this thing so that so, uh, so that we get uh, large deformations. And uh, we define large deformations by uh, more than let's say 10% uh, of the total um, length. Uh, yeah, just as a uh, thumb rule. Okay. Um, Yes, let's uh, keep follow rotation there. Doesn't really matter uh, with this much of force. Okay, run this. Submit. Yes, overwrite. So, when it's done, let's show the results. All right. So, um, it's it's bent already. Let's view the distance here. Remember this was 10 at the beginning. So if you go to tools, query, distance, select this point here, and select this other point here, we can see that the magnitude of the relative uh, displacement unscaled is um, 1.5 and the deformed distance uh, rather scaled is 1.8 so it's an 80 percent increase and uh, that's not good it should be undeformed so I mean you have a rod you apply some some load to it uh, it should not increase in size that's because of of the uh, the um, the wrong model the wrong theory that we're using uh, for this we once you, when you use linear elasticity and you get large displacements as, as we get now uh, we uh, we have a problem. So you can see here that the uh, magnitude is 80 millimeters. It's it's way too much. All right. So what what we can do is switch to nonlinear geometry. Okay. That's uh, it doesn't change the the material of this is still steel. Uh, the only thing it does it it lets us uh, do uh, large deformation. All right, we switch to large deformation theory, and uh, the geometry will, will be nonlinear. The stresses will not be affected per se, so you will get still get huge, huge stresses, twenty-four thousand uh, megapascals. But you know, if you have a linear elastic material that that can handle that, yeah, we're fine. Okay, so go back to the model now, and go to the step. And this is the only, uh, the only thing we need to do is change this to uh, nonlinear geometry. Turn this on. Okay. So now we go to incrementation, 
and we can change the uh, increment size uh, rule of thumb 10% uh, of the uh, of the applied load so if the applied load sorry, the, the applied load is 1 you change this to 10% so 0 0.1 and the maximum is if you you know uh, if you want to do a, um, a history output uh, and you want to you want to have a smooth transition you want to animate this and and, and have at least 10 time steps uh, so that you can get a smooth transition you, you should you should change this to 0 0.1 as well so the maximum time step is 0 0.1 so you will at least get uh, 10 time steps okay and w uh, when, I'm, when I'm saying time step, I, I mean virtual time steps so what it, what this will do is it's going to take the whole complete load this huge load that we applied it's going to split it in in 10 pieces at least 10 pieces and it's going to uh, inc increment and use the new the method to uh, try to to find the equilibrium in each time step okay and the uh, the minimum if, if it doesn't find uh, an equilibrium it's going to to half it the, the this, this time set time step and try again and this is where we set the minimum and if it's if it, if it has if it if the problem is uh, non regular if it's a complicated problem then uh, we might need to decrease this and also if the time period here is is one uh, there's there's only one thing happening uh, we we have no load and then we have load right so we don't need to uh, touch this but if there's lots of stuff happening you know th this could be a physical unit as well it could mean seconds or minutes or whatever and also we could uh, we could have lots of stuff happening uh, you know you, you apply uh, a load uh, for five seconds you remove it and you know we do something else so this is where we set this and then the maximum number of increments in this case we're going to have at least 10 but uh, the maximum number is set to 100 here and there's little chance that we will go above 100 in this particular study uh, but especially if if the time period is 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 increased you know if we increase this to to 10 then of course we will uh, reach 100 at least 100 uh, if not more so uh, change this according accordingly and it you know a uh, doesn't matter if this is set too high. Uh, if the study completes, it will uh, it it will not go beyond uh, this number, but it may end at a much earlier number. So this this can be higher as well. Okay, uh, no need to talk about more of this. Uh, set this to to five. It's probably enough. Um, if if you have more complicated cases, then you can. So this is low as uh, 10 to the power of minus 10. And okay. All right, so this is the only thing that we need to change. So let's create a new job, uh, create, and call this non-linear. Continue, okay. And uh, save and run. Submit. And we can activate the monitor to see what, what's happening now because um, it's going to iterate now. It's not a closed form solution any longer. So it has completed and it took only 10, um, 10 time steps here. Uh, all right. And uh, it actually has completed it in every time step, um, which is quite nice for this problem because uh, there's there's nothing uh the, yeah there's there's nothing complicated with this so let's go and watch the results right click results and okay so uh we still have the same stress let's take a look at the displacements uh, a little bit lower displacements for uh, now than previously and the most important part is that this uh, thing here looks better now. It's it hasn't increased in size. Okay, so let's query the distance again. Distance. Take this point and another point, and we can see here that the deformed distance scaled, and uh, the deformation scale is one. So they're the same. 
is 1.0009 uh, to the power of um, uh, times 10 to the power of 1. So this is 10, right? And it should be 10. So this is, we are good. So <clears throat> that's the effect of nonlinear uh, geometry. We have a non-linearity here, and we can actually view it. If you go to XY data, we can go to ODB field output, unique nodal, and deselect everything else. But the U, uh, U1, uh, sorry, U2, the X direction. Uh, go to element nodes, edit selection, select a point, click OK. <clears throat> and uh, highlight, yes, that's that one, and plot. Get rid of this, and we can see it here. So at the full load applied, you see that there's a nonlinear uh, relationship here. Okay, so that's, uh, hopefully you now understand the difference between uh, a linear uh, system and a nonlinear system, which, which takes a couple of iterations to um, uh, to acquire. So this is pure geom geometric nonlinearity. There are two more sources of nonlinearity. Uh, one is material nonlinearity, for instance, uh, hyperelasticity or plasticity, and uh, another is um, uh, boundary nonlinearity uh, when you have a contact problem for instance. Okay.